guys. We're back at the BFR shop and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the modular rear suspension bracket and um, how it's going to come to you in a kit form since we don't bend anything. It's going to ship to you flat. Uh, so we're going to take a look at what it takes to put one together. It's pretty simple. So we're going to try to keep this kind of short but I am going to uh, build this thing um, while you guys watch and uh, when you get your modular bracket kit it's going to come as flat plates uh, they do have bend reliefs in the plates uh, to help you bend it so you really don't need anything more than the edge of your table or a vise um, shouldn't have any trouble with it I do keep some um, mock-up pieces uh, that are machined to certain thicknesses. This is for a 2.63 um, to help set widths and stuff when I weld. So you guys might not have that, but there's a cool trick that you can take some all thread four nuts. Uh, it's pretty easy to run some all thread through it and use the nuts to set your spacing. Um, it'll help make sure that um, your joint will actually slide in there when you're done welding it all up. Um, if you're planning on painting things, uh, about 060 thousandths. Uh, it's about close to the thickness of a washer uh, for whatever size bolt you're using. Uh, will generally give you enough space for powder coat and stuff uh, and your parts still fit. So <laughs> if you're going to paint, don't forget a little bit of extra clearance uh, for your paint when you space that out. But um, these plates are going to fit pretty good so uh, let's get to it and I'll show you how to bend out each one. Um, you can use an angle gauge, uh, that is totally possible. Uh, I'll list the angles out. Um, but for what we're going to do here, I'm going to use the parts themselves to derive what the angle is. Kind of same way you'd do it. You just grab a few pieces, get after it. It only takes a minute. So get all your uh, pieces unstacked and look at your plate. Your logo should read right. Uh, this is going to be a passenger side, so this is going to angle in. And this angle is going to be derived by this plate. So pretty much you can stick it in the vise and, uh, until it fits. And uh, it'll be the top up here. So let's give it a few little bends and get it on its way. Like I said, I'm going to use my vise. Uh, it's pretty simple to just set it up in here. And... Um, I've got the cut relief set up to where it takes very minimal effort. Just check your plates together, uh, make sure that they're uh, on par with each other. I just need just a touch more. And uh, once you get that set up, um, you can go ahead and do the same thing with your inner plate. Just hold them here. This way your inner plate's going to go. It's going to have the same kind of bend. pretty forgiving so uh, just bend it around until it fits uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do this plate right here 
um, it's got a few bends in it. Uh, so when you set it in here, um, against this top edge of the plate, so if you're looking at how it fits in here against the top edge of the plate, uh, you'll bend this one up to match this. So we'll do that first. All I'm really doing here is clamping down my vise where this is exactly in line with my line and you just give it a little pull doesn't take too much effort but you can see I'm not doing anything fancy here it's, uh, it's not going to be anything crazy just work around on them, it's steel it moves pretty easy then the top, we'll bend it down the match. And there you go. I mean, once I've got my shape, um, I just offset it down. Uh, you can offset it about any amount you want. Uh, something to watch when I offset it down. It's set up for this edge to match the circle. I mean, that way it doesn't interfere with your pipe. <clears throat> so once you got it there, um, you may want to give it just a couple of little tacks to hold this part in place. Let me uh, fire up the TIG well over here for this. I think the welder's got a pretty loud fan, so you might be hearing some of that. But... Now, if you have your, uh, if you have some setup spacers, um, just bolt those in place. And the next thing I'm going to work on is um, this bottom piece. 
or well, it would actually be the very back of the chassis side. Um, one of the X's is a little longer than the other. Uh, the shorter one is the top part of the bracket, so in this case it's, it's going to go down. And um, you can just bend it to uh, match that angle. Same way we did the other. So I'll try to set this up to where there's not a whole lot of science to it. Um, you just use the part to help derive the rest of the part. Uh, it didn't take too much effort to bend them out. I can get a claim. set in there at an angle because this whole bracket sets in the chassis at a 10 degree angle. Um, it makes, it, uh, makes it pretty easy. Again, yeah, something I'm looking at while I'm setting this up here, uh, the top edge needs to coincide with the bottom of the notch for the tubing. You don't want this to interfere with the tubing, so pretty much just line it up right with the edge there. Give it a little spot.
much it. Um, that's all it takes to put this thing together. Um, you'll probably want to go fit it over on the chassis and make sure that it's all good. Um, there are a couple of uh, more pieces here uh, that you're going to want to set in. I guess I can, uh, I can show you that. Teardrops just double the thickness of the material up. I point them up is the way I intended them to be in here. So you've got just enough room to run around with a nice weld and then still enough room to come back in here and get around the tubing. Uh, so you know once you once you kind of spot those in place. Well I got them on here, I might as well spot them. Something that you're noticing here, uh, I'm using pickle oil. That's a little better. I'm getting these cut out of pickle oil steel, uh, so there won't be any coating or any slag. They're pretty much ready to TIG right out of the box so as soon as you unwrap them um, I, they're, it's still kind of dirty I haven't even wiped it down I'll wipe everything down before we weld out here but um, it doesn't take uh, too much effort to just do a little alcohol wipe uh, I think I'm on about 70 amps uh, with the TIG um, and uh, you're pretty much ready to weld up so uh, let me uh, move the camera over and we'll take a look at it on the chassis again All right, so this is what these things look like uh, set up on the chassis, and um, they go together pretty easy. They just bump against the chassis, especially if you use the fixture. Everything should fit real nice. Uh, there's just pretty much bump the plate up against the weld right here. Um, that's going to set your outside. You know, do a little bit of measure, make sure they're both the same. <laughs> they should be, um, but it's just enough protection to protect the head of the bolt. And uh, there's a bottom plate that once you flip the chassis upside down, there's a bottom plate and it ties up and butts against the skid plate kit. Um, but uh, this bracket here is going to be um, the exact same geometry that I'm using on the Evo 3 chassis. Uh, it's already proven itself that it is wicked at putting traction down to the ground and climbing. Um, so it was pretty important to try to model that geometry as close as I could and carry it into this chassis series. Um, the front end is a little bit different. It's got a bottom bracket, uh, two side brackets. If you get the standard kit, 
it'll basically mock this bottom bracket and then it has a bracket that goes up here on the tube uh, so it is a little bit different uh, it's doing some different things with the axle um, but this one is going to be the platform that you can build off of if you notice when they're both in here uh, this is all in one straight plane and the hole is a location hole for a bolt to bracket uh, bolt to bolt on the uh, bottom tray for a radiator that's going to set in here and um, so there's some more stuff that that's why we're calling it the modular kit uh, there's more brackets that um, are going to build off of these so if you'd like to take advantage of these first thing um, the fitment is pretty precise so you're probably going to want to make sure you use that fixture to set the subframe on or you might end up doing a little bit of minor trimming uh, on the bracket to get it to fit in there perfect but uh, that's about all I got for you for this video um, hope it helps you guys set these up I mean shipping them as flat plates uh, versus trying to pre-assemble them or anything or bend them for you um, it's simple enough to do it shaves, saves you some money um, it's part of the fun of building a chassis if uh, you're getting to actually put some of this together uh, on top of the chassis itself um, that's what's fun and when the parts work extremely well it's even more fun uh, there's nothing more frustrating than something that doesn't fit together so um, take the time have fun tick it up make it look good make it up weld it fast whichever you prefer uh, either way uh, if you have any questions um, let me know uh, I'll give you an idea there is one more little thing that I'm going to do with the brackets here uh, I'm going to do another version of them that has a through hole side to side uh, that you'll be able to pass a sway bar tube through uh, and this will be the location where you put a sway bar when you're doing trailing arms and stuff uh, so you have a about a 39 inch link or so here uh, you can have your sway bar in link location straight out from it and um, it'll make things even easier so uh, Stay tuned. We're going to make even more cool stuff for this and uh, keep on building on it. And uh, you guys let me know what we should work on next.